Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixel Perfect, and today we're gonna learn a quick trick to boost the radiance of your images and add punch using a very special blend mode that we often ignore. Also, at the end of the video, we have a very special gift for you as well. So, without any further ado, let's get started. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website or an online store, make it with Squarespace. If you have ever delved into making a website, you know how difficult it gets to build it from scratch, right? And there are times when your websites have glitches like unwelcomed gaps or strange text. Another big issue is that your website looks great on this screen, but when you move to a different screen with a different resolution, it all falls apart. Squarespace solves all of that. They have clean, beautiful drag and drop templates you can use as a starting point. There's nothing to install, patch or upgrade ever. Whether it's a personal website or an online store, it's super easy to create. And if you're still facing issues, their 24-7 customer support is absolutely on point. Check out squarespace.com for an absolutely free trial and when you're ready to launch, you can go to squarespace.com slash piximperfect to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So here we are in Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, check the links in the description. First of all, we need to make a copy of the background and to do that, press Ctrl or Command J. Now we need to convert this into a smart object to be able to change the values of the filters that we apply later. All right. And to do that, go to filter and then convert for smart filters. Hit OK. You can also check don't show again to not show this dialog box again. Hit OK. Now we need to simply go to filter other high pass. No, we are not adding any sharpness. This is different. Keep on increasing the radius until you see the dimensions accentuated. Now, for sharpness, we add a radius of, say, this much when the details show up and nothing else. But for this, we will add a higher radius. Let's go even higher. We need to see the dimensions, the lights and the shadows, where the objects just pop up. Okay, for this image, I guess 43 is great. We can always change this later, right? Just when you're satisfied, just move around and see what looks great for your image. You can see when we are at 40, you see this light coming out, right? So we need to find that number where we see the most dimension. Don't go too high, but this is fine. Just hit OK. We can change this later. Now, simply change the blend mode of this layer from normal. Now, this is very, very special. Hard light, no. Vivid light, overlay, not at all. We will change it to hard mix. Let's select that. I might say, Unmesh, are you crazy? No, I'm not. If you decrease the opacity, it just doesn't do anything much, right? But if you decrease the fill, it's a whole different story. It controls the projection. So let's go ahead and decrease the fill. You see the difference right there? You see how amazing this is? So I'm going to go this way, 35, 34-ish is great. It's looking great on the highlights, but it's not looking great on the shadows. So we're going to name this first highlights. Great. Now we need to double click on the right hand side of the layer right over here, right? Double click there. The layer styles dialog box show up. Now inside of this, we need to take it away from the shadows. And for that, we will take the slider of the underlying layer from left to right because we are removing the dark areas of the underlying layer from the current layer. So the dark areas of the image over here will be removed from the effect that we are adding right here. OK, so we need to take this slider from the left to right, just like so. At this point, it's very harsh. So we need to hold the Alt or Option, click on the slider to break it apart take it all the way to the right and take this portion all the way to the left. Hit OK. Have a look. Only highlights are being affected. Now we need to create a similar one for shadows. So make a copy of the highlights, press Ctrl or Command J to make one more copy. Now you can name this shadows. OK, now I didn't mean to keep that capital anyway. Now we need to again double click on the right hand side of the layer and this time do just the opposite. Let's bring it back the way it was and this time hold the Alt or Option on the right hand side. We want to remove the bright areas and there we go. Just like so. Hit OK. Now we don't want shadows to be so intense so we will decrease the fill even more. Just like so. This seems to be perfect. 14 is fine. Now let's have a look at the before and after, how far we have come. And this is not the end. So this is the before. 
this is the after if you want to hide all this you can click on this arrow click on this arrow or you can also do this you can go to the panel options right here okay and then if you go to panel options if you uncheck expand new effects hit ok and then whenever you add any effects it won't just expand for example let's say i've made one more copy of this okay and then i added an effect let's say one more high pass to it we wouldn't do it just wanted to show this to you or whatever hit ok it's added but it just doesn't expand have a look it's right there too high pass but it didn't expand so that's a way to keep things clean right now to add even more dimension we can add a curves adjustment layer click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves and we are doing this for the highlights all right so we're going to take this slider up just like this and in the highlights we will have more yellows right so we will go to the blue channel and decrease the blue why because blue is the opposite of yellow if we decrease the blue we have yellow so let's decrease the blues in the highlights this yellow is fine but it's getting greenish right so we'll go to the green channel and decrease the green as well just like this wow it looks amazing but only in certain areas let's go to the red channel and just increase it a tad bit let's go back to rgb and increase the brightness even more now let's collapse it select the mask press ctrl or command i then let's zoom in and with the brush make sure it's a big brush and a soft brush and flow and opacity at 100 just dab in certain areas make sure you have selected the soft round brush we want highlights over here with white as the foreground color just dab we have light there we have a little light here okay maybe you want some light over there at the bottom maybe you want some light here in the corners just like that just like this okay let's have a look at the before and after of the curves so this is the before this is the after so i guess we didn't need lights over there the focus is just being distracted maybe you want to dodge and burn a little bit let's decrease the flow to somewhere around 20 percent and just make lines to add dimension over the pillars something like that all right this is great now we have added too much over the windows as you can see we are losing the details you can press x to toggle between the foreground and the background so press x to make the foreground color black and then just you can simply paint on the windows to get the details back just like that very easy to do okay you can do the same over here as well all right you're good also if i look at the statue we are losing details over here so let's paint in black let's increase the flow paint in black also i think let's turn it off highlights is also making it lose some details so we're going to turn it on and we're going to create a mask for the highlights click on the mask button right over here and make sure the foreground color is black decrease the flow to somewhere around 16 is fine and paint on this person we have got the details back we are good to go okay what to do next i think it's too much so let's go ahead and decrease the opacity just a little bit 50 is fine now you can add a color lookup table as well on top of this so click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose color lookup table and of course in these scenarios where it's warm i love to add this this is one of my favorites and that is crisp warm let's add that it looks so much more beautiful of course it's too much so let's decrease the opacity and increase it gradually i guess 36 is fine now at the end you can also add one more curves adjustment layer just like so let's just this is good maybe let's go to the blue channel and decrease the blues in the highlights and maybe increase it in the shadows and let's go to the green channel and decrease the green as well and increase it in the shadows and i'll go to the rgb and let's just delete this point and add some highlights let's take it a little bit to the right just like so and increase the shadows up here a little bit all right so we played with it just a little bit you can play with it as much as you want so here's the before here's the after it looks so much more dynamic if you zoom out and have a look here's the before here's the after now if you're a fan of gradient maps you can add that as well i'm going to show you a trick right now so if you go to gradient maps and if you single click here you'll see a lot of gradients but if you don't see it for yourself let me reset the gradients for you hit okay save 
So I'm gonna save what I had created. Okay, now you will probably see it this way. If you don't see it this way, you can click on the gear right there and click on reset, okay? Now after that, you can click on the gear and select photographic toning. Now when you do select that, you get a lot, just hit okay, you get a lot of presets right in right there. So you can choose from a ton of them. There are very great ones. I absolutely love this, hit okay. Now you can decrease the opacity if you want to or you can change the blend mode to color. So it adds that kind of a tone to it if you're a fan of that, or you can keep it normal and just simply decrease the opacity. So you can do a lot of stuff with this. Let's go 20, that's fine for me. So I played with the settings a little bit, so this is the before and this is the after. Now as promised, I do have a special gift for you. Let me show that to you. You can actually download that. Let me just delete all the above things that we have added. Now, that's an action. So you can go to Windows and then Actions and just go ahead and go to the link. I'll show you the link later. You can download the action called Radiance. Click on that action and play that action. Now, it will pop up high pass for you because for your image, the numbers might be different. You will pick a number where it looks great. So I'm gonna pick, let's say 40, hit OK and it's done. Now it's gonna show you further instructions to fine tune the radiance. You can open the radiance group, you can adjust the fill of the highlights, you can adjust the fill of the shadows and you're done, okay? So I'm gonna hit on stop and then you can just open up and adjust the fill of each of these. For shadows, maybe, for highlights, maybe I'll increase it. Let's just go 34-ish and for shadows, we'll go 14. And there you have the action. Oh, and by the way, if you want to change the value of anything later, you can just open this up and then just double click right here. And you can change the value real time. So you can zoom in and see how the value affects the image. So you can increase the value, decrease the value. I guess I like a higher value like 60 over here and hit OK in case you want to change it. Hope you enjoy this. You can download the action right here. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. Thank you so much for all your support. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.